Wow. Three <laughs> bubble men? Yeah, might be a lot of them. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Department had briefing. I think is that going to be later? Yeah. yeah okay. Um, committee update. I guess we'll do the uh, comprehensive plan. Okay. Deborah. So um, we had our um, public hearing, our second public hearing um, Tuesday night. We had one resident um, come to it. Oh, there's some in the boxes already. Um, I'm one, okay. one short too. This is Corinna. I've already put them in their box. Oh, oh, oh. Well, let me ask this one. Um, so we had one resident come to public hearing, but I felt it was actually beneficial. I think we, um, I think we came to some agreement um, with him about the nefariousness of the uh, of the intent of the plan, um, and I think he, um, I think he was okay. Um, kind of when he left, actually. So that was, uh, it wound up being, I thought, very beneficial, even if we um, just curbed his anger and angst. So I was happy with that. But this is now the final copy, um, and it's ready for ballot. So, um, of course, I want to thank James and Karina and all the people that worked on it with us along the way. It was you know, it was so helpful, everybody was so helpful. And uh, you guys don't have to make, I'm not even gonna ask him, you can sit and I can take it home and we'll have Jeff read it and, uh, and then uh, you guys can make a decision on that. Any questions or concerns? There was no 21 year old girls in Lebanon, 2017? Yeah. <laughs> you listen it up to hard. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> they just nope. weren't in. No, I'm looking forward to reading it. Yeah. Thank you. You guys have any questions? Mm -hmm. um, appeals board? So, um, Monday night we had a public hearing um, on, uh, a lot on the waterfront. And um, we had um, three, our three members who are here all, were, all went over all in attendance. And our new alternate, Kathy, was here. We were, yes, yeah, so we were very happy to have her. We went and did a site visit. Um, uh, I did want to report to Dee uh, fell, slid down, the, <laughs> slid down the hill. And I never thought we were going to lose her into the brink, but she stopped herself. But, um, I, I did want to report that uh, just because I know that, you know. I'm sure she's happy you're telling the town. Well, <laughs> you know, Dee Dee, I love you. <laughs> she did look funny going down the hill, I just have to say. But anyway, um, so we did, we went and had the site visit. Um, it was very helpful. Um, Chief Merrill came to our meeting and provided us with some insight on, um, on the um, National Fire Preventative Association rules. And uh, uh, we wound up granting that variance for a single, uh, single deck on that uh, structure, uh, based on fire safety. Um, and uh, we were very concerned because uh, Chief had talked about not being able to get a truck in there, um, and that any ladders that would have to be used for that structure would have to be hand carried by firefighters down that same slope <laughs> that our member just slid down. So there was quite a bit of discussion. We actually came up with three possible alternatives and in the end, um, it was motioned that we, uh, we'd we go ahead with his original plan and uh, and grant that, that structure. So uh, that's how it wound up and uh, it was written up by 4.15 Tuesday morning and uh, good thing and uh, and then it was uh, notarized today. It was printed on a letterhead. Uh, Jen printed on a letterhead and uh, came and signed it today. So, awesome. Donna, okay. done deal. Great. Uh, public participation, non agenda items. Am I doing this now or is that later? No, that's later. No. You're an agenda item. Um, proceed to uh, 
the yeah. American Legion's here. Are you here for anything? I was here to uh, uh, kind of stand with Jeff on the issue. Okay. Uh, since he's not here, it's. So I can actually have discussed that issue since it's public participation. Um, so we've been having quite a discussion for a long time about um, fixing. You're here with the ball field, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. About fixing the ball field. Um, I was asked to get in touch with John, and apparently John retired a year ago. So John is, that's why John's not answering my emails. So, um, so actually I have gone back and talked now to the donors who have offered to, uh, to give the donations of the wood and all that stuff, and I talked to all the people that are willing to do the labor. They're all still ready to rock and roll, except for the one guy that was going to give all of the materials. Um, he had little problems over the winter with his vehicles, so he's going to do half, and I have to find somebody else to do the other half, which I don't think will be difficult. Um, but but now, since I've exhausted the John thing, I really, really need to go ahead and get permission as soon as the weather breaks to fix that dugout. Um, one of the things that um, I guess Jeff is looking to revitalize the uh, Babe Ruth League, um, probably as an American Legion League, I think is, is the way he was looking to do it. Um, and uh, I also have the Southern Maine uh, Christian uh, softball group that utilized the field last year. They'd like to use it again. Uh, uh, Lindsay Quigley, who's a firefighter over in Acton, she'd like to start a firefighters league. And of course, they'd all have to schedule around each other so the earlier we can get them actively working together on scheduling, the better. So um, basically, I guess Jeff's going to actually do the motion part about the ball the ball groups using that field. But I would like permission now to waiting all the time for it to get that dugout fixed, please. It's a town on the property, right? Do you see a problem? Oh, no. no. Yeah. So is it go? Yeah, I think it's great. Good to go. All right, thank you. Thank you. Something else? Depending how time goes, there may not be anything later. <laughs> That's okay. All right. That's all right. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Review of minutes. Hmm. You can just pass them around. I make a motion we accept the minutes of January 30th, 2020, as written. Seconded. All in favor? Uh, AP warrant this week, well, last week was $85,521.59. Eighty-five. Eighty-five. Five to one, fifty-nine cents. Two, one, fifty-nine? Yep. And then this week, it is $606,000. $849.88. School? Yes. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Time off. Time off. The membership for Stacy for the Society of Human Resource Management, uh, Professional Human Resource Membership Association. provides education, certification, and networking to its members while lobbying Congress and issues pertinent to labor management of joining SHRM to gain access to member-exclusive sample policies, legal and compliance resources, HR news, free webcasts, HR magazine, uh, etc. And then the annual membership is $219. Um, Stacy's interested in doing that or having a split with her. I think it's something. 
I'm going to make a motion that we do that for her. All in favor? Aye. Center Road, right? Yes. Right. Did you find it? Let's see. Yeah. I have. Oh, okay. I know they, they went in. Yeah, they went in. Um, yes, I know that. We did this. We saw it sometime. I said for her, so I was assuming the whole thing. But yeah, I was saying for her. Okay, okay. that's what I thought. All right. I'm just going to say for Yep. <coughs> um, and this is Jen getting a uh, well, code, our interim code officer, temporary authorization for local plumbing inspector. There's a bill attached. Oh. Want <clears throat> to change for the ambulance? Six months, it's But they uh, can read down through if they want any social security number of one of the individuals in the office here, which strikes me as very odd. We should be giving them oh, social security numbers for this is the highway, okay? Yeah, this is the people we buy the uh, coal patching from. Did she call them and ask them why they did uh, I don't know if she did or not. But they did uh, some bold black. Oh, yeah. So let me just see. Well, well, I guess if Scott wants to give him his. <coughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's 
for credit for them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. She wasn't interested in any of that. Yeah, right. okay. Chuck? Yeah. Apparently the video is not actually running. You're saying they can't see the video. Sorry. Does it say it's running? Mm-hmm. That's the problem. I don't know if this might have something to do with well, it's recording, so we can. The same thing happened. Yeah. Thank you. We found the comprehensive plan. We want to put that up to Appeals board. Appeals board. Are you dead? Appeals board. Yeah, no, the comprehensive plan one. Oh, the comprehensive plan. Yeah. Oh, you found the, um, the one for months? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did you find the appeals board one? No. No, that got deleted. Yeah, it's deleted. Um, and these are some letters being sent out to uh, some people that applied for jobs. <laughs> sent an updated copy or version um, of the, the local cost share um, agreement. So that's a very standard agreement um, for a project similar to this. So what we typically do, because the bridge was removed previously, um, you know, there was a vote to bring it back, um, both from Maine and New Hampshire. So there was an agreement to um, move the project forward to replace the superstructure. The abutments are still in place and they're still sound. So there'll be an analysis done of those existing abutments to make sure that they can still take updated truck loadings and things. So there may be some work on that, but the plan would be to put a new superstructure on there and reopen the road. Um, the agreement that was made several years ago, I don't know the exact time. Um, I think it was in um, end of 2016, early 2017, um, is that there would be um, at the time, it was agreed upon a 10% local match um, per side. Um, so specifically 10%, which at that point in time was $130,000 that was brought to vote and it passed according to the documentation that I have. Um, now, I've had this project for a little over a year, so I do apologize if I am missing any information. I'm, I'm happy to, um, to take whatever information um, you folks would like to pass along if I'm missing. So feel free to stop me at any point if you've already heard it or want to add. I got a it. question, boy. Sure. So that's that price. Uh, the price has gone up. You said it has. So and um, the new price is based on the, the structures that are in there. Hold the the columns holding what you put on top of it. So the new price is based on just relooking at the estimate in today's dollars. So um, New Hampshire DOT is leading this project. So Maine DOT is participating with a 50% match 
um, of the, the total project cost that they've estimated at this point to be 1.45 million to do the project. Um, so that is where the 145,000 um, that is currently in that agreement came from. But that's based on the the full project. The, but the columns that are there were being Correct. still structurally sound. Yep. And do you have any idea if they're not what the cost would go to? Um, I imagine that they they still are pretty close to sound, but it's concrete work or maybe some grouting work. It, it's not an extreme but cost difference. Um, some of it may be, um, you know, they'd really have to examine it. I don't know exactly the condition that they're in that would be part of the preliminary process. So this is still very early on um, in the project as well. Um, New Hampshire um, does have, I think it's HDR engineering on board um, to present a proposal to do the work. So they are going to have a consultant to the design of this. So they'll have to do that analysis during what we refer to as the preliminary engineering. Um, for this, so you'll probably hear of some public meetings and things like that coming up for the project itself once it gets going. Um, Maine DOT and New Hampshire DOT do not have a signed agreement yet. Um, from the Maine DOT side, we wanted to make sure that we had everything straightened out with you folks um, before um, anything was signed between the states that would be binding. We wanted to make sure that you had the chance to, to have a say in things, and same thing from our side. Um, so. <laughs> Um, part of the reason that cost went up is we have been getting some pretty crazy bid prices um, the last few years. That's actually caused Maine DOT to cut some projects because of the, the expense associated with it. Um, so just generally year to year, there's usually some some cost upticks. As, this year has been like astronomical compared to previous years. Um, last year was really bad. This year it seems to be not any worse than last year was and it seems to be taking in a, a better direction when but, did this quote when did this new one come through so this new quote is from the mid last year so it would be in in a line with some of those higher prices so um, because of that um, at main dot we looked at it and decided that we didn't want to base this on a 10 percent match um, in case this project comes in at 1.7 when it gets bid um, we didn't feel that that was fair based on the size of the project, the scope of it, the conversations that have been had up to this point, and just how long of a process it is to go through both a municipal and an interstate agreement. Um, there's just a lot of red tape and things to go through. Um, so to us, the best thing to do would be to cap it at that 145000 um, So if the project comes in at $1.2 million total, you guys would only have to pay 120000 um, but if it came in anywhere north of 1.45 million, it would be capped at 145. That's the number for a maximum that we would expect from a local match. So those are the discussions that we've had. Um, the agreement has gone through our contracts department, our legal department, just to make sure that um, the wording is correct for both sides um, in there. Um, that you know, if there's any cancellation, you guys get any money that you've submitted back. It's not something that gets lost in translation. There's no weasel wording that, you know, we're going to hold on to it until something gets decided by legislature or anything like that. It's, you know, the project, if it gets terminated, you get your money back, whatever you have supplied towards the project. Um, typically it's done in two percentages. It's 50% um, of the cost up front as, as construction begins. And then it's whatever is left um, as things go through construction is how it would typically be set up with that 10% um, because things can change during construction. If there's things that they find while they're building it, it could change the price, but that doesn't really apply here. So it's basically 50% when construction starts, 50% when it would be done of that. Do when, they, if, when they do these type of bridges, do they, are they based on the quality is based on the amount of traffic that's going to go over? So um, usually what goes into the amount of traffic um, for the area is um, the width of the bridge itself, um, the, the curves in the roadway, sight distances, things like that. So the faster the traffic, the larger your, your curve radius is need to be so you have more time to react. Um, this is <coughs> low speed with it being more of a rural area. Um, there's not as much traffic, so it, it's probably more that especially building on the existing structures, you know, it's not going to be an extremely wide structure. Because um, the reason I ask is because since 
they did the study as they did at the beginning of last year saying that Mighty Joe has put together this huge expansion mm -hmm. and they're in court right now trying to get, I think, 190 sites, is it, Deborah? 196. 196 sites added. That would probably quadruple the traffic on that right now. Okay, so you said it's Mighty Joe. Yeah. That's the... And they got approved for the water park, which was... They got approved for the water park. Um, and they're in court right now to try to get the additional campsites. They also changed out. I want to tell you, it was, I think that's the 90th they know. They changed it from campsite campsites to park model campsites. So, so people have got to tell them it's going to increase their use. And the, the water park is going to, I mean, it's huge. It's like two Olympic size swimming pools, slides. Mm -hmm. So the amount of traffic that's going over the bridge is going to be. <laughs> I mean, I don't think townhouse in Milton can support the traffic going over to 125. So you, that first person's instinct is that they know that's a two mile trip to the right and it stopped. Mm -hmm. It's a one way in and one way out currently. They're going to turn left and right. go over the bridge into, into Lebanon. Okay. So uh, whatever they have from last year for bridge traffic is nowhere near what it's going to be. Okay. Um, so I, I apologize for not knowing no, what, no, what, what Mighty Joe is. But yeah, is no, that, that's fine. It's a campground. A campground? Yeah. yeah. So also that name will be changing as well. Okay. Um, they're going to. It's going to be a uh, Yellowstone Jogi Bear, Jogi Bear Jellystone Park. Oh. So that will. That Jelly, will Jellystone is what it's yeah, being. Yeah. So okay. you know that that's a huge draw. Just the name. Right. Uh, so campground and what park? And they've already been approved for the water park, so they're in. They were not allowed for the uh, campsites, but they're in uh, Supreme Court, I think, in New Hampshire. Okay, so that is on the Milton side. Yeah. Okay. But it's like right on the other side of that bridge. Oh yeah. Okay. So it is. It will be chaos coming over our roads. Okay. Yeah, that's. I'll, I'll certainly make sure that New Hampshire DOT is aware of that. So. Um, with capping at a 145, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot that changes um, for the project. Um, even if we see the costs go up, I mean, DOT is comfortable with you know absorbing the, any additional costs that that would come up on that project. Um, you know, north of the the 145, um, as far as that 10% goes that the, the local cost was originally set at um, the local share. Excuse me. So. Um, how it works with our agreement with New Hampshire is Maine DOT has um, the right to review and reject anything that, that comes through from the consultants. So we, we get time as they're going through the process to also comment on what's being done. Um, it would likely be a joint public meeting because it's in New Hampshire light, it would probably be in Milton. Um, I know at Maine DOT we try to hold um, you know, court for the public meeting as close to the project site as possible. So at one of the same offices, I'm not sure exactly how New Hampshire DOT does it, um, but that is something where we would be sure to pass along information of when that meeting would be to you folks so that you would be able to go and participate in the preliminary process, gives locals time to provide any helpful information like we expect the traffic to increase because of something coming in or you know, we'd really like to see a minimum of this or, you know, whatever it may be, we can bring that information to that meeting um, and that can all be um, taken into consideration in that preliminary design. So federally, it's mandated to do that. Um, this is a state funded project, I believe. Um, so with Maine DOT, we still follow the same regulations. I'm not sure exactly how New Hampshire does. They tend to do things a little odd as opposed to what we do, so, um, or I should say different from what we do. Um, so there's still opportunity um, to comment on that proposed structure. I guess that's where I'm going with this statement. Um, it is still early. Technically nothing major has been done on this as far as design goes because there hasn't been an agreement. So money's not supposed to be spent on it until the agreement is done. Um, just because there's red tape about what is supposed to be included and what's not and, um, and things. So, um, so we want to make sure we give you folks some time to, um, to comment on the agreement, which is why I sent it before coming down. Um, and then also, if you had any questions, I can answer as many as I can up to this point, but it is still very early in the process.
Well, I think I think if I remember right, I went back and read the referendum in the past. I think it was based on a said uh, three years at forty thousand. I think it was one hundred twenty thousand. So it's a twenty-five thousand dollar jump to the taxpayers. So I just, I'm not comfortable agreeing to it until it goes on a referendum that the dollars have changed. Um, that's it was my, originally one twenty. Yeah. Chuck, and then they uh, then it did go up to one thirty and then. No, so uh, that would be my, so we wouldn't, I, well, I don't know how everyone else feels, but that's a lot of money to just spend to the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it would be something we wouldn't know until June. I mean, aside from my personal feelings on it, the amount of traffic and the wear and tear on our roads and Newbridge Road and the cars that are going to be coming, uh, I mean, if they happen to get approved, I can't believe they got approved for the water park, if they get approved, the 190 sites, our, our roads aren't designed to handle the amount of traffic that's going to be cut across from 95 mm -hmm. to there. Yeah. And we're having enough trouble keeping our roads in the shape they're in. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely think it should be the, the people's choice. Okay. Um, aside from my personal opinion, but I, I think that was what, what would happen if, if it was voted down? Um, that's a great question. Um, I imagine that um, me and DOT would have to talk about it internally um, to decide about whether we would want the project to go forward. Um, as it stands, based on the existing condition, um, you know, we press forward with re removing the structure the first time. Um, so I imagine the project would not go forward, is, is my gut feeling on it. Um, you know, we, we certainly listened to public opinion and wanted to, to make sure we were doing our due diligence there, um, that it was voted to, to put a structure back. Um, and, you know, and we proceeded forward with, you know, trying to do that um, as best as we can working with New Hampshire. It does take a long time, a little bit of a longer time on those border bridges to get things going, which is why it's that original long time to state anything, but that was <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and then again with, you know, the funding crunch that we've been seeing with bids coming in really high. Um, this is um, a lower priority road compared to a lot of other things that we've been focused on, on spending the money on. Recently, some of the smaller scale projects are the ones that have been kind of pushed down the line a little bit to find some of that money. Um, whether it's good or bad, um, you know, we certainly look at everything from a condition rating to start to make sure that everything is safe. Um, but those lower traffic roads usually have some extra life in them um, to move them out. So um, long-winded answer that we would have to, to take it back and see whether that project, this project would still want to proceed forward if there wasn't that local match. So, um, but it's a little bit trickier when, with New Hampshire involved and everything like that. So a discussion would have to be had internally. Well, I, I just wonder if the, if, the people vote it down and it's not just because of the money, but it's because of kids playing in the street and you, know, you got 21 year old kids heading to the 18 year old kids heading to the water park mm -hmm. coming across, ripping through because they you know there's no police here. And you got little kids running around and um, whatnot. So I wonder if, you know, if the town would be, the people of the town wouldn't be in favor of it possibly, not just the dollar wise, even if it was the same price, they might not be. Um, so I wonder what the recourse of the town is on that, if it's... Um, yeah. We can certainly, you know, have discussions about it. Honestly, I, I'm not 100% sure how exactly that works. <laughs> um, you know, we certainly take safety in the highest regard for any project that we're doing. Um, this is a little bit of a different situation where the road doesn't really go anywhere right now, and we'd be putting a road back, so it kind of entirely changes. Um, the situation existing as opposed to normally where, you know, improving site distances as best we can on on roadways and things. And, and we would certainly try to do that on this project as well. But where there's no road or traffic to maintain currently, it, it's kind of a different animal than we're used to. And if, if Newbridge Road, let's say Newbridge Road, when it was made, is designed for so much traffic with the width and everything, mm -hmm. and by putting this bridge in, with just the water park, if the traffic capacity was increased beyond the capacity, would the state feel comfortable putting in that bridge? So, you know, we would certainly want to, so 
every project that we do, we actually project, um, I think it's a 2% growth per year um, on traffic and apply that over 20 or 30 years. So we try to project um, traffic growth on every road. So whether that encompasses this, this large of a traffic you know, change that you, you folks are anticipating um, remains to be seen. I'd have to look at what the numbers are um, currently. Um, we would design um, the roadway to meet what the traffic demands. Well, I'm talking the rest of the roadway, though. So, where I'm going with that is typically, um, you know, we try to tie a new structure into the existing roadway, um, you know, meeting all safety requirements that we can, but typically as quick as we can to try to utilize state funding across the state, you know, kind of appropriately, kind of everywhere. Um, I guess it would depend on how drastic of a um, a traffic change there actually is, and it may be that you know they assume a percent increase for the structure itself, and then have to re-examine the roadway after they've seen how traffic changes over the course of a few years. So um, the road, the br the bridge would be designed with some design assumption, assuming an increase of traffic and then the road would have to be examined after the fact. So uh, so with this case being in the Supreme Court and not know which way it's going to go, it could be there for a year, a year and a half, and it could, I mean, if that passes, it's going to probably quadruple the traffic. <clears throat> so, um, I mean, it wouldn't be real responsible for the state to put a bridge in and not knowing what the possibility of, I mean, it'd be like 190 houses. Mm -hmm. going up in one you know one little area pretty much sure and, and that's certainly something that that we would take back and and, uh, and look into and you know that's what those preliminary meetings are typically for is to try to gather that sort of information that wouldn't be necessarily apparent just looking at existing bridge plans and and current traffic counts and, and things like the information that we have mm -hmm. readily available um, doesn't always cover that, which is why we go out to these meetings to, to have these discussions. So, you know, that, that's wonderful, wonderful information to gather. Um, typically, there's not that drastic of a jump where you, we can't anticipate with a growth factor that we apply to something, um, you know, covering the traffic that's going to be out there in 20 years. It usually doesn't change a right. lot in right. the area. Um, so, you know, we could certainly look into other areas that might have seen similar jumps in, in what was done there but for this level of, of roadway where it is a town way um, where the town has maintenance of, of the road after um, it's installed so plowing and things like that um, you know the range of what is encompassed by that is usually pretty straightforward you know it ends up being 26 to 20, you know, 24 to 28 feet curb to curb, which gives you 10 or 11 foot lanes with a couple foot of shoulders on each side. Um, that range is usually pretty easy to, to meet for all the traffic levels that we typically see on townways. Okay. Um, yeah. You had a question? Well, I had two actually. Um, one was as far as you were talking about the structure, um, coming on the open comments and stuff on the structure. Would they, are they looking at a rise in that bridge to accommodate the? Both traffic underneath? Um, that, that would be something that would have to be hashed out in that preliminary design. That hasn't been discussed as of yet. Um, I know it was discussed in all the earlier meetings okay. uh, back when they were sort of closing the bridge down and talking about replacing it. That's mm -hmm. critical to, you know, to, the, to the light to be able to okay. get to flow between. I mean, we've got three ponds here. And if that, that would be like actual motorboat. Like you would need. Pontoon boats, motorboats. Okay. Yeah. And the, the bridge that it's replacing had a two and a half, two foot, three inch rise in the middle to accommodate boats. It would need at least a couple of foot rises, what you're saying, yeah. to do that. Okay. <coughs> I've got the exact measurements. I can... And the other thing I wanted to, to bring up is, um, as far as the, the increased traffic, we know the marina right there at the, where the bridge is. Um, Mighty Joe's water park is not going to be open to the public. That's only open to campers that are there. Yes. So I don't see where that's going to have a big impact on traffic. When people well, they can, have the water park. they can have day visitors. They come to visit the camper at the site. The sites are going to be I'm sure the business is going to go through. I mean, 
they're doing it for increased business. If if their business is maxed out, there's no reason to put into Olympic sized swimming pools and water slides. It, it makes no for the other 192 sites that they're looking at putting in. Yeah, uh, but it, it, yeah, but it, to go forward with that without the other thing and to assume they're not going to increase it, they're, they're going to increase their business. And they say it's not going to be open to the, but they're not held to that by Milton. That, that wasn't part of an agreement or anything like that. It was just the word of a lawyer to the word of <laughs> the people that are sitting on a board that it wasn't going to be open. It's not in the conditions of the Yeah, there's no conditions. They can change that as soon as it's in and operating. They can say open to the public and not come spy all day. Uh, and and then the other thing is just knowing what the traffic was there. I think it's been there probably 20 years. Um, I mean, the vast majority of that campground's customers has been, and I'm guessing will be that the demographic can't flow for <coughs> coming out of Massachusetts from, from the south. Yeah. And if you've got, but the people that are coming from Maine, from Portland, from, you know, wherever, um, one way or the other, they're coming through London. Yeah. So um, my fear is not is not the people. You're right. I think probably eighty percent of the traffic comes up from Massachusetts that is there, so they go out the Milton side. But if they do get this past one hundred ninety, that place is open to the day. That Townhouse Pond Road is not set up on a Sunday mm -hmm. to let people out of that. And I could, if it's backed up and they go on their Google and it's red all the way down, they're going to turn left and go through Lebanon and down over the bridge or over to two hundred two. They're not going to. Which is what everybody's doing right now to come to our place. Yeah. All the boats. No, I. Uh, well, you're a limited business, though. So yeah. 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 I, I think that's, you know, a big issue. That I, I don't think they're set up. I think it was irresponsible of Milton to okay that. They don't have that. There should be a light down there or something that they can control. <clears throat> uh, they haven't even talked about a police officer down there because, you know, 125 is on a Sunday. You know, it's like if you're going to Walmart on a Sunday night and you get on 16 and you're like, oh man, what did I just do? So that that's my biggest fear. Now, can I just get a clarification? Is it Muddy Joe or Mike? Mike. M-I-T-E. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Can you can you just... M-I-T-E hyphen J-O. Muddy Joe. M-I hyphen T-E hyphen J-O. Mike hyphen J-O. Okay. Sounds like a all right, so yeah, I guess that's those are those are my concerns. Over. Okay, so June would be the earliest that a vote could go, is that yeah. correct? Yep, yeah. okay. Just one quick question. Sorry, quick question <laughs> is it working here? It says that that 125 is count. Yes, um, it is. It's at the bottom of one of the paragraphs. So you know, bring it up, and I can search for it. The easiest thing. It says maximum of is how it's worded. Oh, this is the last page. Is it this page? Um, yeah, it may be working. On the last page. Right here. Mighty Joe area 
Office trail product set to 125. Can't drill it. Uh, you two can set up. Sure, and you know, we certainly understand that um, and, and are willing to work to work to certainly put the pressure back. You know, that, that's that's the whole purpose of the project is to, to add that um, that extra direction. Um, and uh, again, because I've only been assigned to this project for the last year, where not a whole lot has been going on with it, um, I'm not sure of the exact conversation that conversations, excuse me, that were had originally as far as this going back and what went into the the local cost share and everything, but. Um, you know, with that being the direction that was agreed upon, um, you know, just just trying to make sure that we're we're working with you guys as, as best as we can to to make sure this project does continue and go forward to, to provide you know that structure. Um, and it's something that is in. Um, it's something that is funded. Um, so we're just looking to try to get the agreements together so that it can proceed forward. Um, and again, because it's New Hampshire's lead, um, I believe the schedule is to try to put the project out at some point in 2021 is where it's looking at this point. And so it would be either construction in, in 21 or 22 at this point, depending on how long the agreement process does take. You know, every, every month we take now is, you know, just pushing it further out. Um, so that construction would be subject to um, an in-water construction window for environmental permitting um, reasonings. Um, the standard window is usually the summer, July 15th to September 30th. Um, I don't know if this one falls into that window precisely. It's based on the type of aquatic species and um, just species in general that are around the structure. Um, and when they're spawning and, and mating and, and seasons are so that that's typically what that in water window is based on um, is the, the type of species present in the area. Um, so that would also control when construction could actually happen is when we're legally able to do work in the water itself. Um, if any needs to be done on the substructure. So if not, they could do it theoretically at any time. Um, it's not like there's traffic to maintain there currently so you know it should be a relatively quick construction once they actually get going on it um, you know this is all based on a very broad stroke look at the project itself um, you know if there's significant grade changes associated with raising the structure up um, you know that's certainly going to cause some additional construction time and roadway construction and things like that and um, you know that's something that's going to have to be examined um, for sure, I don't know if that is currently part of the existing proposal. We made some comments on it and they were looking at some other things to add into it as well. Um, both New Hampshire DOT and Maine DOT made some comments. So it's currently being revised. Um, so I don't know if that's in there or not um, at this point in time. So that is something that I have jotted down to make sure I check into, um, for sure. Anybody else have any questions for him? Actually, I did want to say he's right about it. First, everybody came to that um, for this bridge because of the safety aspect of having that bridge there. You know, but I, I, my concern now, hearing all of the Mighty Joe expansion, my concern now is definitely with Chuck. Um, I mean, if sometimes you see those RVs come, I mean, they're buses. They're big, huge buses. And that road is not designed for a bus. But if, if there was discussion on you know, the state taking over, fixing that road. I mean, you, you've never been down there, obviously, but that road is not the size of us. Or even a big truck, probably on one of those big RVs. It's just, it's just not designed for it. Somebody will be hurt. So, I mean, if the state was looking at completing that whole road, maybe. So well, that and they're checking out and they're checking in, so they're gonna, they'd have to complete the road all the way I to Oxidal. I can't even imagine. Yeah. I can't so, even imagine. I can tell you right well, now well, that well, that is probably well, 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 you can put two well, kinds of on, this, you know, what it is on the same thing. I mean, the townhouse road okay. itself is 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 a and that's yeah, well, one's problem. It, they did that themselves. You know, but I'm just saying, like I don't that. want to do that to the people that live in this town right. because you, half of these roads. I mean, Center Road maybe, but half of these roads, if people cut across them, they're not designed for two of these huge RVs to be right. passing each other. Right. It's going to be problem. And checkout is usually it's like a hotel. The checkout's earlier and check in is later. Right. So. It, 
Well, I mean, yes and no. Usually you see increased traffic on like a Thursday night or a Friday coming in, um, Saturday morning. So it's staggered. I mean, some people come in on Thursday, they take an extra day off from work. Some people come in Thursday night. Some people come in Friday morning. Some people come in after work. Oh, Friday. you go to Cumbies on a Saturday morning? Oh, I can't even imagine. It's yeah. the only gas station in town over there. You know, I, I can't even imagine because those RVs would be lined up all the way down 125. People be trying to pass them to get around them. If they don't widen that road over there, I don't know how they're going to do it. I, I just don't know. It's it's a huge safety issue. But I do understand just giving Milton a little bit of a thumbs up because they sit on the appeals board here and just giving them a little bit of a heads up because that company came in with money and they moneyed them to death. They, it, it, there was no way that they weren't raising their taxes by 10 bucks a mil, for real, because they money, that company money that town to death. Did you have something you wanted to? Um, yeah, I was just going to say is, you know, um, most townways are not set up to have that level of traffic. I, I live in a smaller town um, up in the Gardner area, and the town controlled roads are not set up for that either. You know, you're lucky if you have enough space for two cars to go by with, you know, a foot of pavement on each side of the cars. Um, you know, that's just typically um, how things are set up, um, you know, in, in town operated and, and controlled roadways. So um, you're absolutely right. You know, they're, they're, they're typically not set up for larger traffic in, in both directions. You know, can it handle an RV in one direction? Sure. But, you know, is, is a car going to have to pull over a little bit to feel comfortable and let them buy? And you know those jelly stone packs, they're set up for RVs. They're not, they're not tent campsites. That's an RV sure. campsite. Um, With a boat. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> With a boat. And a four so, Which is good for some folks, you know, to have Golf cart, yeah. Uh, no, but that won't help. So, um, I, I can say that I'm fairly confident that there is not any sort of plan in place to do any sort of major road reconstruction for the area um, based on, you know, partnering with this project or anything like that. Um, it, it's certainly something that could be looked at, but, you know, that's a different process in itself. Yeah, probably somebody from Main DOT should actually look at that area before you. And, and we can certainly, um, we can certainly have that. Because I know you haven't been, and I know there's nobody else that's been. So, all right. Well, anything else you want to add or ask or? Um, just writing this down. Sorry. Oh, I don't think that. Um, no. Again, you know, I wanted to make sure that I, I gave the opportunity for you folks to comment. Um, and you know, if you're looking to, to get it onto your um, uh, referendum, then it's certainly a right to do so. I'm not sitting here trying to stiff arm anybody. Yep. Um, but I guess um, going forward, what I'm going to do is, is kind of bring this back to, to the bridge program brass and, and our legal folks and whatnot, and just make sure that they're aware um, of what the town is looking to do. So maybe if I can get a summary email sent to me, yeah. um, that would be helpful so that I can pass that along to um, for our management and just make sure everybody's on yeah, the and then the same page. and also find out that if it that you guys don't find out until the middle of June whether it's still going to be capped because I mean, it changes again, right? And <laughs> our sole intent, I mean, we if, if you were willing to sign it, I was willing to have it signed, right? No, I know, but if things but, change between now and then, because say the two months, the four months wait pushes it off eight months to get done, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you guys say, well, we're not going to cap it now because it's going into another year. Yeah. But it's after it gets on the ballot, so they approve the 145, and then all of a sudden now it's going to be 175, and we're going to be doing this all again next year. And and I can say with a lot of certainty that the cap of that 145 won't change. And you know, if it helps to have that in writing from somebody um, from the DOT, I'm sure I can get that just so that you know it, it instills confidence of you know of agreeing to that increase in that cap of 145. Even if it's pushed off. Even if it's pushed off, um, you know, I, I can certainly answer these questions. If the project is canceled for 10 years, you know, it's a little different, but, you know, within a couple of years, I don't see that being an issue of, of, of worrying about that. Um, but it's just a big decision for the town, so I think the people should understood, make it. Understood. Um, and, and again, um, you know, we're, we're trying to, to do right by everybody involved. Um, we're not trying to stiff arm anything. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I just want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to comment. Oh, you've been great. I, I appreciate you coming yeah, down. Thank you for having me. Over everything. Sorry that the weather didn't cooperate last week. Oh, since this time. I know. I know. Um, 
So, you know, again, assuming that, you know, th this does move forward, there is going to be another meeting to, to be able to comment on that will be bridge specific. Um, and, uh, and, and that's certainly, you know, uh, there may be some a, a clear picture based on the, this Mighty Joe type situation yep. at that point in time. Um, you know, if that's three, five, seven months from now, whatever it may be, um, there may be a clearer picture to discuss at that point in time. Yep. But, um, you know, we can certainly look into this um, and see if our traffic folks, you know, have any concerns about that affecting, um, you know, bridge widths and things like that. Um, I don't think it's going to just based on the ranges that we ap apply, yep. um, you know, th these type of bridge widths too. Um, usually when it jumps above 28 foot curb to curb, you know, between the rail, um, there's a pretty significant traffic jump um, between, you know, a townway and a... Between you can fit it in. Yeah, between like a townway and a state road, you're talking usually it's like, you know, a couple of thousand versus like six plus thousand. So if it gets to that point based on projections, you know, we'll certainly look, look at it, you know, in that light. Um, but... I'm, I'm sure that there is some sort of standard practice to apply when something like this is, is, is planned. So I, I will look into that. I don't know exactly what that is offhand. So I do apologize for that, but I will try to track down some information. And um, if you can send me an email um, about the referendum, I can certainly supply some information about what I find out back. Okay, so. get one more question. Yeah, just real quickly. Mm -hmm. Does the state have the ability to come in and take a, a look at what Mighty Joe's doing and <coughs> make an educated guess as to what impact they're gonna, their move is going to have on the town? Um, on the you know, there are certainly traffic studies that can be done based on businesses coming into an area. Um, some of them are based on some, um, you know, standard um, equations and things like that if you're um, there's a bunch of assumptions that you can make to try to predict a traffic increase through an area um, I am NOT an expert on it by any means I, I do bridge stuff I haven't focused on the traffic stuff entirely so I, I can certainly find out what sort of process we would typically take I think they need to know where that 190 sites I think would be the big one I mean it, my opinion would be that your decisions made based on the 190 sites. Well, it's 196 additional. Right, I understand. But it, 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 it would be what it was already. It's right. It's changing by that. Right. So, I mean, no, they, basically, they're doubling the size that they had when their bridge was open. So, this is already here. Hmm? This, this might the be. The has been here for. Okay. Yeah. And they're just for, playing to, like. They're basically doubling the size. Okay. So, if you, you know, that's kind of where I'm taking a little bit of a, yeah. of a uh, challenge to your numbers of six full the traffic. They're only doubling the, the number of people there. So, even if you take that double and then double that again because you're going to have fewer people going down townhouse due to traffic, I don't think it's going to be quite as stretched as you think. Well, it's even, if, if townhouse is backed up to Mighty Joe, everybody coming out is going left. Um, if the water park ends up opening on a daily basis, Saturdays and Sundays won't be six, it'll be tenfold. Yeah. Um, I, I so they also way. have to add that they're not even using a third of their property with this addition. Is not even using up a third of their property. Well, a lot of their property is yeah, they have water that was wetlands over there. But yeah. I'm just saying they're not even. I mean, if they ruin the lake with the two water parks they put in, like the lawyer, other lawyer said, with the algae bloom, it won't matter because they won't have any business anyways. But not much <laughs> and um, I, I certainly don't want to downplay um, any of the the reservations or anything like that. Um, some of the traffic analysis that we do might show that it's just really not going to be a big deal yeah. and you know that's that's not intended to just squash a discussion and just oh they'll stop talking about it it's um some of these don't have that drastic of an impact even though it might seem like it may when things kind of flush out at the end it, it may not be severe enough to cause the need for extra bridge width yeah. um or, or anything along those lines um it, it, you know Things are, are based on ranges to try to encapsulate as much as that potential changes as possible. The, you know the way that our spec, our specs and standards are set up. I don't. It, but I don't. I thing. don't think you can accurately estimate the impacts because Milton is setting it up yeah. where they're not designed. So most of your studies, the other towns or whatever around, 
the roadways are designed to handle what's there. Mm -hmm. You got someone putting or something with one road out, and then you know we're adding another road to it. Right. So, and, and that's where you know I, I made the comment earlier, and um, just to kind of reiterate is that you know the bridge is going to be designed to try to take up a future capacity. They always are. That, yeah. You know that standard practice for something. And oh no! I assume it, the bridge will last. It's yeah. Newbridge Road. I'm worried about. Yeah, and, and, it's, roads. and it's more that it probably warrants a traffic count after this work is done to really establish whether that road needs whether significant, right count. <laughs> whether the road needs significant significant effort, whether the state might step in to help or something yeah. like that. And, and those would be discussions that would have to have. And unfortunately, our hands are tied in some instances where it's hard to fully predict something until it actually is in place. You know, we right. can make sure that the the bridge has a predicted capacity that it can handle and it's going to be able to handle any, you know, sort of truck loadings and things that it, that it needs to. But width wise for, you know, traffic going through there, we, we typically try to be a little conservative in those instances because we know that traffic changes over time and, you know, we want these structures to be here 50 plus years. Yep. So, um, okay. you know, all of that does get taken into consideration, but some of those traffic analysis, you know, it seems scary to start and it turns out, oh, you know, it's not predicting to really be that big of an issue. And I, I just want to forewarn that, you know, that could be the result of it, is that right. we're going to say, oh, it's fine, don't worry about it. And, okay. you know, you can certainly request traffic counts um, or, or do them yourself as well. I, well, I, I, show, I don't think there's any way to predict what's going to happen. Right. Just if they get the 190, it's just going to be chaos. And yeah. <laughs> that I do know. But. It's good right. information, you know, that's why it's helpful to come to these. So again, thank you for no, having I appreciate you coming down and, um, and we'll I'll get you an email off. And yeah, I'll leave some business cards if, you know, if anybody has any concerns, um, they can certainly reach out to me directly. Um, and uh, I'm happy to, to try to answer as many questions as I can or, you know, to try to get more information if I don't have it. So thank you for coming and thank you for, uh, for having me. Thank you very much. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll send you an email once they have. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks again. Yeah, appreciate thank you. it. All right, James. Drive right, safe. Um, Thanks. I'm so going to ask you to know, kind of keep it consolidated a little bit tonight while we're running behind. Or if you want, we could do it another. We could do it well, another night. What I'd like to do, since we're missing two of the selectmen, I'd like to table about half of it. In particular, the discussion of number of licenses and fees. Yeah. I think that's going to be a bit contentious. Um, some of the other ones, I think, are just. Fairly simple up or down questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we can run through those quick and at least answer the ones that we can. Well, I, I guess if we're giving you direction here, I'll be honest without Karina, who probably has a strong opinion on several of these since she's on the committee, it might be fair to wait for her. Okay. I, 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 well, she, she has her input at the Right. Meeting as well. Um, but if she gets out okay, so, of so if that's the case, what I'll do instead is at our meeting this week, yeah. we'll start working on um, the caregiver. Okay. Because that's not dependent on this one, whereas okay. the medical marijuana is. Yep. So we'll do the caregiver, which means next week we'll probably have both to go over. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know what the agenda is like for next week, but. I don't think we really have. If we don't have much going on, we can do that. If not, we may. I don't, I don't know if we'll actually be able to get the caregiver one pulled together that quickly, but there is a chance. Okay. Because um, you I'm, might have a few questions on it, even if you don't get it pulled together, yeah. we'll get it to help you go in a direction. Because you, know? you see how extensive this one came out being. It's 13 pages long. Yep. So. Okay. Cool. Awesome. That was easy. Thanks, James. Good talk. <sighs> business. Forestry Cemetery. Sound. All done? It'll be recorded. Because it's soon to get back to our lawyers. Oh, who's better than you, Paul? No, uh, a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, reviewing the properties with the insurance company, Karina. She's already been on that recently. East Lebanon Fire Department transfer. Uh, I put... Drafts in your boxes. Is that this? Yes. Okay. Um, 
that's that's the draft. The the uh, lawyer right now is trying to get contact with the fire corporation in the ladies auxiliary. Yep. To make the final connections, but it's very close. Okay. Um, and he is very basic. The noise ordinance that can come off. Compost to transfer station, that's Karina LED light project. I still haven't finished up with um, CMP on that. Emergency shelter, that's Jeff. So we'll have to wait on that one. Karina, the snowmobile parking, the snowmobile club. Uh, appeals board training scheduled for second Monday in May. <coughs> Recycling. Um, we come up with a plan for the barrels for handling the cans up there. Um, that was going to run by you guys. Basically, blue the blue uh, food grade barrels with 55 gallon drum liners in them um, on pallets. The guys up there have a pallet jack. I was going to put wheels on the bottom of the pallets with Jeff, but he said we didn't need to because they have the pallet jack. It'd be just as easy for them to move them around, um, and they can take the bags out whenever they're at the right. Figure out the right weight so they're not overfilling them. And uh, I talked to him up there, Mr. Patch, and he said that's a perfect idea for him to give it a shot and we can put covers on the barrels to keep the snow and the rain out. We don't have to build a structure and they can kind of place them and change where they're located till they get it down with what they want. Okay. Um, and I got to check on the compactor repair. The weather slowed us down last week and it might have slowed us down again this week because they're closed Thursday or Friday and the snow. So, but I haven't spoken to him today to see if they were able to do it. And Monday for the holiday, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, so he might be able to do it Monday. Um, let's see. So that's where we're at on recycling. And that's what needs to be done for the cardboard to start. Um, the emails, Lynn. We talked about that today. Yeah. So that's all, all good. Um, transfer station sign, that should be under underway as we speak. Um, should have that hopefully with he said a couple days, so maybe less than a week. Commercial haulers. I worked on that with for Corinna, so she'll probably present that. Okay. Uh, purchasing policy, Paul. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's been busy, I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that was when we get slid back each time. Um, <laughs> and repairs at the transfer station I already spoke about. thing I'll go into is the phone. Um, <clears throat> currently what we're paying a month is $5.98. The new plan with the new style phones based off the internet um, is $443.78 for a savings of $154.39. And that's for everybody, right? Is yeah, that, that includes on your transfer yep. by okay. town office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, all. And then that includes a fax for one of us. Mm -hmm. So that, that includes that's everything that we need right there. Yeah, the only thing that would be different is an app to have the phone, like if it would bring to my, my phone if there was an emergency and it would close for some reason. Yeah. So if it was somebody's phone. Right. Each app would be an additional charge if we needed that. $4.99 a month, I think. Okay. Um, per per line or per per, per app. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, so uh, you did a great job at setting this whole thing up from start to finish. I mean, that's a good savings. Plus, the phones here aren't great when you call. So. I make a motion that we switch switch companies with the phone. Seconded. So, all in favor. And uh, one last question: Is there a contract? No. <laughs> okay. So that's that first. After that waste management contract. It's like, oh, crap. Um, all right. Individual selectment items. Laura? Um, so I'm just reading. Let's see if you gave me a message. On. Um, we're looking into, we have to look into, and I haven't looked at the paperwork yet, but um, about an abatement on a property. So um, I've got to look at the paperwork for that and then talk to Stacy. Um, the John O'Donnell 
check. Can we mail that? I signed today, first thing, as soon as they showed it to me. Okay, so she can mail it. That's what she's just saying. So she has four signatures, so can she send it to him? I, I would have just said it if I was her the first time. Okay, well, I, <laughs> no, I know. she just she, wanted she, to make sure. She should have waited. No, I, I yeah, well, no. she did the right thing. Yeah. Anyway, um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for me. Okay. Paul? Um, the repair of the transfer station the first time, which was $4,893 back on June 28th, the money was put into the, most like you mentioned, taken out of the, right. the trash pile. Yep. Are we going to leave it there or are we going to try to transfer it over to where it belongs? We should probably put it where it belongs, would be my guess. I bet there's no funds there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Stacy asked me, so she yes. doesn't know what to do. Yeah. My guess is we put it where it belongs and it goes negative, and that's what it is. What is the date on that bill? 6 19. So that's last year's budget, anyways. Yeah. So. And that bill came in in what? Then I don't know. I don't know. Is there a date like when it was run off at the time? No, this is this is the uh, oh you mean this book yeah? Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, eight one. August first. So that I, I think is I I think I asked her to look at this and she didn't get back to me yet. Uh, on the two budget sheets, the one the covered budget sheet, the amount's different than on the broken down total for the year. So one of the, that is. According to the one budget is either on is split. I don't know which one's correct. I don't know which whether the budget worksheet. I don't know how to explain it. or what they're actually the summary expense summary page worksheet. So yeah, matter of fact, this is it. I think. Yeah, on this one it shows the 398. But then on the cover sheet that has the breakdown of just the, yeah. it's a different, it's a $28,000 difference. Right, right. So I don't know which one got pushed back to last year or whether it's on this year. Because according to this, one of them says it's on this year and one of them says it's on last year. Okay. So she was going to let me know. But she's got a lot going on with everything else and whatnot. So I guess we should find out. Because if it's on last year's, we don't have to worry about what line it goes on because it's coming out of there. Okay. Right? Oh, that's sir. Okay. Uh, what else? Um, the AP warrant that we do, we had a issue with last one. And it's happened before. When we basically, uh, she's already cut the checks, and if we don't want to make a change to the AP, it affects the check that's already been cut. Okay. So what she wants to know is, we'd be interested in doing like we do for payroll, doing a preview, going down through it, <clears throat> and if so, how many people do we want to do the preview? How many signatures are we going to require before the, she does her final run? And what was the issue with the check being held back for O'Donnell? Uh, or no? It, I'm not sure if it's that one or something else. It's, it's just that okay. once, it, once it the check's cut, right. it's very hard to go back. Yeah, I, I think the preview's fine I, I, with the same as we do payroll. One it's just as easy. One signature. Yeah, I think that's fine. How do you feel? I don't think we should only do one signature. No, no just the preview. Just, just the preview. Oh. No, the, the, the regular is still yeah, required I mean, three. Yeah. Okay, so what if the preview one person says yes and then the next person comes in and says no? Well, Just, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. I think that's a problem. <laughs> so we should have one specific person have to do the preview. <laughs> That will fix the problem. <laughs> yeah, but then the other person, I'm, I'm sorry, you know. Um, I, I think it might slow her down too much. I agree because people can't get in here to sign it, so that's the problem, I don't too. Think, and it, I think her choice should be, to that person's choice should be to either sign it or not sign it. 
if they don't want to sign it because they don't agree with it, then that's fine. But it doesn't. I don't see how they can put a hold when a majority of the people that are on the board say it's fine to make the payment. That's my personal opinion. Well, that's my only concern is, yeah. you know. So one person making a decision like that can cause chaos. It's majority rules and I'm sorry if that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. So we're doing the preview or not doing it? Yeah, I think the preview is fine. The preview, yeah. yes. One signature, I think it's fine. Okay. Motion? Uh, yeah. I'll make a motion that we do a preview on the AP warrant before it's signed. One signature required. Second. All in favor? I know I'm going to regret that. What? I know I'm going to regret yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you get the voice of reason. <laughs> 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 All signature. That is what I should have said. <laughs> he knows it. Right? He does. <laughs> he does. Um, next budget meeting. Of us. Monday. Right? Wednesday. Is it going to work? I don't know. Deb says it should be Wednesday, but that's when the budget committee meeting that's is. The budget committee. I don't. I, I, can't, no, no, I, I can't commit that I can come, so I, I I can't say I can. But so when can you come, or when would you like to meet? I don't know. I, I might be able to, but I don't know. When would you? I don't. Maybe Monday. No. <laughs> but even Sunday evening, could you send out a text? We could kind yeah, of. Yeah, but she would have to post it, so she's going to yeah, post it before then. I could do. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you can just post it for whenever it works, and I, if I can come, I can come. Okay. I, I would do whatever works for at least two years. Worst comes the worst, we can just rough draft something. Yeah. yeah. What okay. do you guys want to meet? I don't know. Jeff's off, right? He's, yes. Yeah, he was in favor too. Um, Yesterday. <laughs> I don't know. No. Work for you, Paul? Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Okay. I knew. I knew. <laughs> we need to um, stop all public events at the fire station. <laughs> so I don't know if we need a motion for that. Or... <clears throat> we have a blend our schedule the 22nd. Not at the fire station. <laughs> 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 Why? Uh, hold on, please. Um, yeah, you want to make it? I'll make it if you want me to. Uh, I'll make a motion. We, for the time being, suspend all public events at the uh, either fire station. I know we haven't been having them. Mm -hmm. um, the one on Depot Road, but also the one at Blaisdell Corners until we can get some things checked out. I'll second it. All in favor? I'll give you a chance to ask that, okay? Just wait. I'll give you a chance to talk Can the automobile still come outside? I'll give you a chance to talk again, okay? Thank you. Uh, that's it. All right. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have one more. I'm sorry. Um, we have a standing order right now that any purchase over five hundred dollars requires board approval. Mm -hmm. um, and our policy for for um, purchasing it states anything that has to do with buying supplies for the uh, roads such as sand, gravel, pavement like that did not fall into that category. <laughs> um, which one takes presence? I think whatever policy is in place until we replace it, which is the one that says those don't. Okay. I mean, that's something that we kind of, as a board, came down on to keep the budget right. in control. And if we so basically just what it shows you being paid yeah. and not so. No, I, I think that sand and salt, I don't, I mean, that's something that's pretty scary to yeah, well, hold up till we get some what's payments. Happening, what's happening is the, is the uh, coal patch. It's a two hundred dollar buy, but they make two trips. They right. Go, they go. No, I don't think uh, that kind of stuff. I don't think there should be. Okay. <coughs> For now, anyway. Yeah. Okay. I'm all set. Okay. Um.
So uh, we have some issues at the front office sometimes after meetings with the girls trying to uh, cash out and get stuff done out there. So what, what we'd like is when the office is closed and the meeting's over, um, unless we're possibly coming back into session after executive session to make an announcement. And if, we, if there is a possibility of that, we'll set something up. But if you are out there, depending on the evening, why are you looking at me? Well, <laughs> you're, the, you're the queen of the party sometimes. Um, you guys just got to be respectful that they're trying to count work and they're working with money. And, you know, when you're counting change and pennies and dollar bills and stuff, so it's a safety issue. So ideally, like I said, if we're going into executive session, the night's over, we're not coming back in. If we're going to make our decision another night, um, we'd like you guys to clear the building. He said, if there's a chance we're coming back in, I'd be polite enough to let you know we wouldn't do that and come back in and make a decision where you couldn't be here to see it or make your comments on it because I know it's important to you. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, people going behind the counter out there without permission um, or just walking into offices, um, even if we're on boards and stuff like that, there's got to be a little bit of uh, respect shown to them conversation um, I hope that not it's for everyone on the boards and stuff and people <laughs> it's not it's not anyone in particular so to speak it's Thanks just the traffic there's <laughs> people going right back there and they're counting money and you know if you're used to people walking by and all of a sudden you don't pay attention to somebody walks in and you're counting money um again there's issues with that so we need to just remember it's a place of business out there and um, they're trying to get their work done just like anybody else. It's, you know, a lot of work. I, I work from home a lot and, you know, if the kids are off from school and people are talking and it's like, you know, uh, you can't get your stuff done and it's frustrating. Um, but you don't want to look like a jerk telling people, Hey, I'm trying to count here or that sort of thing. So, or I'm talking on the phone here, please. <laughs> um, so again, it's nothing, nothing intentional that's being done. Um, and we did it today to Lenny, so. Um, so those are my things on that. And then uh, personal selectment issues. I don't know a lot. I have. I, I hope everybody gets out or has a chance to, especially you down with your camera and get over to Sanford's new high school this weekend. Um, Noble's over there wrestling for the state championship. I will be there. And uh, I think it's a program that doesn't get enough recognition in town for what they are. They're one of the dominant, dominant programs in the state of any sport. And it's great for the kids. It keeps a lot of kids out of trouble, teaches a lot of kids a lot. So a lot of good guys that have wrestled for 13 years, 14 years are going to be over there. Sam Martell going for another state championship. Uh, Blake Alouette, um, who's having a great year. And, uh, Joshua Cody and the other Cody brothers. Um, so I think it'd be great if we could get out and show them some support and Coach Gray and the rest of the noble wrestlers. Um, I think that's it. Did I miss anything? Did you have one? No. no. All right, Deb. So, why can't I have my blood drive at the fire station? That's my birthday, Chuck. Um, we're just having some things looked at over there to make sure that um, the building's up to codes and Is there an issue with the station? Uh, not that we know of, but we're not professionals, so we need to get it looked at. So just out of the blue, you decided that day to like have it looked at? No, it wasn't, what do you, it wasn't what do you, out of the blue. Oh, okay. Just keep no, there was some there was some people that questioned the uh, the safety of the fire station. So responders? Oh yeah. I no, it that. wasn't responders. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't responders. No, it wasn't. Okay. So, um, in order to make sure everyone is on the same page, we have some things being taken care of over there. Do you know when the inspections will be complete? Um, we don't. Will it be before the 22nd? Maybe? What's today? The 13th? No, it won't be. Uh, my guess is it won't be. I can't imagine it being. So can we still have the blood drive outside, but we'll just have to figure out another way no. of... We can't have the blood mobile outside the station? I don't think so. What do you, what do you guys think? What's it's not it? even in the station. I know, but... Do you use the inside the station for check-in? We do, but we could make alternate plans. I mean, it wouldn't be too difficult to check them in outside. You could park an ambulance out there and check them in. That's right. You could do anything. 
I mean, I, mean, I don't think I knew Could you use, the, what is, when is it? The 22nd. Which is what? A Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Why don't you do it here? Move it here? I could do that. And you park will be outside if you... Somebody want to come and open up the thing? I'll come down and do it if you need to done. Will you really? Yeah. 9 o'clock. Okay. See you then. I'm not saying I'll spend the whole day here. I will, uh, huh? Not the whole day. <laughs> Sorry, he had you. No, I'm just kidding. Nine to two. You can come. Is that okay to do it? Yeah. yeah. That would be great. And okay. I'll, uh, I'll make that arrangement to have them come here. Okay. Yeah, because then I get it. Oh, might as well tell you. Pastor Bob Andrews, I see his ordination is also on Saturday, so I want to wish him a very big congratulations. I'd be an ordained right up here at the First Parish Congregational Church on Center Road, and um, that would be at three o'clock. Nice. So, yeah. And then uh, also the um, Republican caucus is in Stanford this year. Um, I can't tell you what time because I don't go to them, but um, it's on a Facebook page. And it's all during that same time period. So, anyway, two thumbs up to Pastor Bob. We're real proud of him. Doing a great job as our county commissioner as well. And, uh, uh, people like I think people are welcome to attend. So. Okay. Awesome, Mr. Cool. You have anything else? No, thank you. Good. Nothing. Just came to see us. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> 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 the the best place to be all next week. Next week. Next week. All right. Is it my turn? Yeah, it's your turn. Um, I make a motion. <laughs> we go into executive session for personnel matters pursuant to one MRSA 4056A. I'll second. Paul and Vail. I'm going to take like five minutes. I'm going to put this one up. My backpack's not big enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I'm looking at it, I'm like, it's got wheels and everything. Yeah. We have the same eyes as this one. Just say the. 